What's up, everybody? Blue Gabe, y'all check out my very own Christmas present. I went the other morning to go get uh, Kelly something for Christmas. Unfortunately for her, they didn't have very many women's items in there, but they did have plenty of men. Y'all check out Exhale and Jupiter. Dude, this gun is so nice. And check out what I shot with it on my very first dive. Come over here to aisle two. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Whoa! Mm. Look at this monster. Look at that big mutton. Now I'm gonna show you how I got this fish and all the other ones in the cooler. First, I gotta explain where we were at. We were off the coast of Jupiter, Florida in 80 foot of water, diving with my new gun and all I have is a GoPro on my head. So it's gonna be like you're watching a video game. You're seeing exactly what I'm seeing, the way it all unfolds. I started off my first dive shooting a really, really nice mutton, much smaller than this one. And y'all just watch it from here. The last thing you're gonna see is me shoot this big one so I can explain what the fight was all about.
If you wonder why I grabbed him and stuck the shaft in his head, that was to kill him really, really quick because I was out of air and that was my last dive of the day and it was 86 foot of water and I needed to come up. And I actually came up way, way too fast and spent the whole evening in the most dire pain ever. I think I had a bubble in my shoulder, which is like a mild case of the bins. No bueno. So I'm gonna show you how to break this fish apart and a couple of the lionfish and a really beautiful strawberry grouper. Now, a lot of you might not ever see a snapper this big. Some of y'all might see a much bigger, and I'm gonna show you exactly what you can do with this entire fish. We're gonna start by scaling it. And I come all the way up here on the head, just using a spoon, because when you cook, you don't want any scales in anything. And then you come down here to the bottom and just start going at it. And if you do it really fast, you can get it done just like that. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is flay it. 
Kelly just informed me that she wanted me to cook the head today so she could pick on it. Now, I want to save the throats, but right here where I speared him, if you see, I speared him a little bit lower than I would have liked. And part of that is being, I've never shot that gun. I was just hoping I hit it, let alone where I hit it. So it wasn't the best shot in the world, but I grabbed him as quick as I could. I got my hands on him, got control of him, grabbed the shaft, put him in the sand to where I could hold him down and kill him. So everything went smoothly, except for the coming up part. And that didn't go as planned, but I lived. I didn't die. I'm here to make another episode of Blue Game for y'all. Hopefully you've checked out my last video, which was a crappie catch, clean, and cook, where I challenged a pro football player to a fish off on Lake Okeechobee. And I'm telling you, I've never laughed that hard editing a video. He's probably one of the funniest humans on the planet. And an insanely good fisherman. See that? I got my wire glove. Now I can clean them how I like. And not have to worry about cutting myself. These bigger muttons like this can be hard to get through those pin bones. Because they're so big. Typically, I don't leave the skin on, but we have some friends coming into town from Kentucky. And they're going to come over for dinner. And I actually want to grill the fish, so I left the skin on. Look at that beautiful filet. So I'm going to knock this other side off, and then I'll show you the next step. So now you can see he's missing both sides of his body. All we have left is the rib cage, the throats, the head meat, and the backbone. Now, typically, I wouldn't have a big gash right here. So I could actually keep this all part of the throat. Let me flip it around. But unfortunately, I hit him a little bit bad. So I have to disconnect it that way. Now with a knife in the backbone, you don't want to destroy your knife. So take it and break it. Take it and break it. Take it and break it. Now, again, I'll tell you, you can do this with any size fish. So, a little fish, any fish you catch, you can do this. Look how good that'll be for soup. All I gotta do is break that tail off, throw that in the pot. Now, this is the trickiest part, and you better have a glove on. Take the tip of your knife, come down in here. See this little flat spot between his throat and his gills? Just cut down. See that? See how it's split open? But if you don't tread lightly, you can cut yourself very, very bad here. And I speak from experience. Now look, you see how it's disconnected from the gills in the backbone? And you can use shears or whatever you need to to get that off. That's what we call the throat. This is the chicken thigh of the fish. And to me, probably one of the best pieces. So I grab it right here and I'm just going to twist it off. Just like so. So, got the backbones, both throats, plus this little piece, obviously. Got the tail if you want to eat that. Both fillets and the head. Now there is a little bit of meat in here. And Kelly wants to pick on it while we cook the rest of it. So I'm going to remove the gills. And this can be tricky, tricky too. You gotta come in here. See this little, it's hard for me to explain. But you see that little soft spot in there? Right there where my finger is? I'm going to take my knife. And I'm going to come through, put my finger in that hole and wedge the knife down, just like so. Oh, that just splattered all over? Just like that. Come down through here. It's hard to show the camera exactly what I'm doing because these angles are weird, but it's just touch and feel. Once you do one, you'll learn on the next one and so on, and you'll get better at it. And it'll all just pop right out. Look at the crushers. Yeah, well, let me tell you all about those things right there. That's what they hold the fish in their throat with, and they will devastate you. Ow, they're like little 
snapper teeth. Yeah. I'm gonna grab this and just twist it off. Now this is unedible along with the guts. Nothing you can do with it, but you can do a lot with that head. I'm just gonna literally throw it right on the grill. You'll have all this meat and the cheek meat and maybe a little meat in there around the brain. We will see y'all in the kitchen. We got a lot left to show you and talk about past trips and upcoming trips. And I'm gonna show you how to cook some of this fish and I promise you it's gonna be good because I'm starving. Who is ready for lunch? Y'all wanna see some superpowers? Watch this. What about that? Actually, I didn't do that by hand. I took a knife and cut it. Y'all check this out. You see me wipe my hands on my clothes? Kelly just yelled at me a minute ago. I said that I need to put a rag on. So we've got a smorgasbord of fish to cook right now. We've got the fillets of mutton, this beautiful little strawberry. And if you don't know what that is, I'll show you one right now swimming. They are some of the best eating fish to ever swim. And that's actually not a huge one, but it's not a small one. They don't get very big. I think about that big, big as they get. I call it a strawberry. There's probably actually a more professional name for it. Then we got the lionfish fillets that I cleaned earlier. And these things are as good to eat as anything you could ever imagine. And we got the backbone of the mutton. We've got the one part of the rib that was blown off by my spear gun, the two throats, and the head. So we're actually gonna vacuum seal the fillets. We're gonna vacuum seal the lionfish. We're gonna cook the grouper, the backbone, the throats, and the head in this video. Because I wanna save this meat for some guests we have coming in town. Got some Lowry's garlic salt. We're gonna sprinkle some on like that. You will be amazed just how much meat is inside a fish's head. Now, if you notice any time you see me dealing with fish in the kitchen, I'll always have paper towels down. They're just gathering the juice that collects after you spear a fish. So I'm gonna put the head on here and I'm gonna douse it with some butter, lemon, and garlic. Uh, butter and garlic. Nothing just to let it cool down before it goes on the grill. You know that's gonna be good. We're pretty much gonna do the same thing with the rest of it. I mean, this backbone right here, if you took the time and picked the meat off of it once it was cooked and made a salad, I guarantee you it would feed two people. And most people just throw that away, especially here in America. Just like so, let's go out to the grill. Yeah. Much more careful now since I almost fell that one video. I've got the grill. I've got the grill going pretty hot. I want to put it down, meat down. The backbone, it doesn't really matter. The throat, meat down. The head. Now let's go vacuum seal some fish. Y'all look at that. That's just the backbone and the little rib piece. We got a whole lot more to go. While that's cooking though, I'm gonna show y'all the most important thing to do when you catch a lot of fish or more than you're gonna cook at one time. So as you can see, I had the fillets on paper towel and I do go through a lot of paper towels doing it, but I get them good and dry and this is why. When you vacuum seal fish, it will last 10 times longer than if you just froze it. You can get vacuum sealers anywhere or you can order this one, it's up to you. This one, the link for it is in the description below this video. And you can also save 10% if you use my promo code. But you can see it sucks out any of the air that's in there. The fish is dry, now it doesn't have any air and it will stay in that freezer for a long time. Just that easy. I can now put the time, the date, what it is, throw it in the freezer, and you won't have to wonder in a month when you go to pulling stuff out. Because Kelly and I kill a lot of fish, but we have a lot of friends and we eat a lot of fish. This lionfish like this, oh, it's on a whole nother level if you get to cooking it. 
And if you want to see me cook lionfish, I have plenty of lionfish videos on my channel. Just stack them in there like that, pretty flat. And I'll lay them in here. Try to get the bag about as flat as you can. Back and seal. Now this one actually has a scale, so if you're food prepping or just need to know what something weighs, right there. Boom, that's it. I actually had to trade the other filet, if you're wondering where it went, to my neighbor, because I went to vacuum seal fish and I was out of bags. Luckily I called him, he said he had some. I said, I'll trade you a big chunk of mutton. So hey, that's that. We'll see y'all back at the table when all the food's done. And then I'm gonna go over some of the videos we've done recently and tell you about some that we're going to do tomorrow. And they're gonna be so much fun, we're super excited. But can you smell it? Look at that. Kelly's volunteered to eat the eyeball. That is a beautiful head. We got some throats. But check out right here. Look at this little dude. Look at that. Smells good. Look at that. I mean, you guys, it doesn't get any fresher nor any better. Now, Kelly's been filming this whole entire thing, so I'm going to take over and let her try the different cuts of this fish. I, it was killing me not to eat this while you were preparing the other fish. Are you going to go ahead and straight face tell me you haven't tried it yet? I, I tried a little That's bit. That's what I thought. A little bit, but I didn't want to like ruin the presentation because look at this spread. It's so pretty. Mm. That was the backbone. So good. Look at that. I mean, this meat right here is the same thing on the filet. It's just stuffed in between the ribs. Try a little piece of that throat. This one? It's so tender. It's like the dark meat of the fish. Juicy, look at that. It can be a little fishier than the rest too though. It could be, but that garlic salt completely cuts the fishy out. That's what about the, the head wonderful. right here? Look at the teeth still on there. I want his, um, yeah, this part, the top of the head. It's hot. That's by far the best piece of fish on the whole, that on the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Even on a grouper. It's just like moist and falls apart. And it's a thick piece of meat too. What about this fish over here up. still steaming? Yeah, that thing is spicy. So real quick, what was your favorite part of Jamaica, the fastest thing that comes to mind? Sticking my arms in holes up to my shoulders, pulling out a crab. That was my favorite part because I felt so accomplished. I dove down the first time and I, those crabs are so strong and I didn't get them the first time and I thought I was done. I was like, dang it, I just blew it. But then I dove down again and the hole didn't go as far back as I thought it did. And I got them. What about you? This fish tastes even better because I've technically fasted for 16 hours, which was kind of my goal. I wanted to go like all day and then into the next day, but he was cooking this fish. So I'm like, well, I can't really pass up fish. That piece is hot though. What about these green beans cooked in coconut oil? Mm -hmm. My favorite part of Jamaica, hands down, was the first day we went to the river. I really didn't film a ton of that. The ride back in the trunk to that little square and with all those like truest form of Jamaicans. They were off work, they were enjoying themselves, smoking some ganja, drinking some beer, eating amazing food, and every one of them treated me like I was their family, and they had no idea who I was. Was that when me and Lauren were on the boat? Yeah, that was oh, when y'all were crabbing. I mean, everybody there, you know, Omar and Boom Boom, Smiley, oh. they all treated us like family. I want to have Omar and Boom Boom come to Florida so bad. There's not a better fish that swims than Strawberry Grouper. There's just not. It kind of looks like lionfish. It looks like lionfish in between a mix with a grouper. My goodness, that's good. So anyhow, tomorrow morning we're leaving and headed to Crystal River because grouper season closes in two days. 
Kelly's got her girlfriend Cheyenne coming and I've got my buddy uh, Mr. T Rev Trevor Roberts if you watch I think my last hog video he's coming and we're going to do a grouper sheep's head hogfish snapper beat down sort of a Christmas present to ourselves because we've been pushing so hard nothing, we, sorry do what I said nothing beats big fish in shallow water <laughs> yeah unfortunately it's freezing cold water too though Low 60 degree water, we got wetsuits, we're mentally prepared, and we are gonna go beat them down. We are gonna film a lot of it, but we're also gonna enjoy a lot of it. We're gonna go to a nice restaurant. We're gonna end the year with a bang. Have you tried that yet? I did. If you haven't watched my last video, like I said earlier, I took Willie Young, a professional football player, crappie fishing on Lake Okeechobee, and I'm telling you right now, it's the funniest video on the internet. Oh God, Jesus! My bad, my bad. Oh, almost fell, almost fell, almost fell, bro. Golly, man. Woo! I'm glad you got about a six foot reach because I thought I was going in. You cannot get any more enjoyable of a video with any other human than Willie Young. He, his love for life and the sport of fishing and harassing me and him and I just going back and forth. That YouTube video does not get any better. My very last one. If you haven't seen it, go back to my YouTube channel. Either search, I challenge an NFL star to a fish off, or look for this thumbnail right there and watch that video. Right now though, we're gonna finish all this amazing fish. We got some, you got something else? Look at that cheek dog. Yeah, I wanna show him that. Now this is relatively a massive snapper, but look at that cheek meat. Without falling, look. Let me see, let me see it real quick. No, 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 no. Let no, me no. see it. Get out of here. <laughs> I know you. I got one right here, boo. Oh, yeah. Got one right here. Look, right here. Boom. Smoking. Uh, yeah, and once again, I'm going to preach. You can do this with a small fish. They have equally as much meat pound per pound as a big fish. And you miss so much of it when you just flay them. Like, look at that chunk right there. Put that on a cracker, dude. I'm going to put it in that sauce right there. My goodness. Thanks for watching though. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for checking out all of Kelly's videos. The love and support is amazing. Right now though, like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape, but I can't reach that far. See y'all.